From the front pages of your newspapers to your television screens, we bring you captivating stories, separating the noise from the facts, giving you the most relevant and accurate information possible. This is The Headliner, and I'm your host, Nabila Jogi. And my name is Kurt Lee Gwindi. Such a pleasure to have you joining us here on The Headliner, your weekly dose of everything to do with the discussion of economic issues and also taking a look at what's headlining the print and digital press an appreciation of this particular week where we are taking a look at all things to do with the SADC industrialization week a melting pot of networking corroborating and collaboration and in studio to also give us a deeper insight as to some of these happenings on the economic front with regards to the industrialization week we are joined by Mr. Tapiwa Mbizo who is an economic analyst thank you so much for joining us sir thank you Kathleen such a pleasure to be having you in the studio and maybe a breakdown with regards to your appreciation of all things to do with these matters how have we seen development happening in Zimbabwe and on several fronts in this particular week as we build up to the actual summit that is taking place this month on the 17th uh, well uh, it's 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 been good uh, for us especially uh, here in Zimbabwe where we are actually the hosts and um, having to anticipate the president also becoming the incoming chairperson. Uh, it has also brought so many eyes into our country whereby a lot of investors are now looking into what is happening in Zimbabwe, what are the opportunities that they can take. Like for example, I have friends um, in Angola, South Africa, Botswana, they actually looking at opportunities uh, to invest in our uh, economy, which is also going to be a huge potential. Uh, in the growth of our economy. Oh, yes, and uh, the growth of the economy is integral uh, regarding all these things. Nabila, we've seen huge and massive potential coming through and also change in Zimbabwe. A breath of fresh air has taken place because of this particular season. How well, are you feeling? You know, absolutely. I totally agree with that. But for me, the most exciting part of it is, is that, yes, I understand that other countries are looking into investing in Zimbabwe, but we look at our diasporans, people that are living on the outside, turning back and looking back into Zimbabwe and wanting to come back and invest into the country. And that, for me, is the key to industrialization week. Absolutely, absolutely. And yes, it's all happening here in uh, Zimbabwe, our land of milk and honey, as they call it. But at the very same time, we're going to delve deep into all this and more within the second segment. The SADC Industrialization Week, which roared to life in Harare last week, seeks to promote industrialization, showcasing investment opportunities across different value chains and uh, facilities networking among stakeholders in the industrialization uh, sector. A very, very huge step and obviously a huge story we'll be tracking here. That is why we have our special guest in studio, Nabila. Well, I'm not the special guest. I won't uh, take on that because it sounded like I was a special <laughs> guest. We do have a very special guest, uh, Mr. Tepi Wambito, in studio with us. But I do, have a, I do have some questions for our economic analyst on this. But we are going to proceed with the last headline that I have for you, and that's coming out of the Financial Gazette. Now, this one reads, As local business were eagerly looking forward to the SADC Industrialization Week, they were anticipating of securing new major trading opportunities and contacts about sizable companies across the region gathered in Harare for industrial showcasing, which kicked off on the 28th of July and so the 2nd of August. Now, this is a precursor to the SADC Summit, which will be hosted again in Zimbabwe mid August. And that is very exciting. As currently mentioned, it is the 17th of August that we kick off the SADC Summit, and we are very, very excited for that. But that is a story coming out of the Financial Gazette this week. Oh, yes, and uh, that brings a wrap to the headlines. We have been uh, trekking this particular week, and uh, a lot has been happening uh, with regards to um, uh, stories that even ha the digital press uh, has been uh, obviously trekking. I do know uh, it won't be the headliner without us talking about a headline um, that was on the social scene as well as showbiz front. That is the name Tiffany Haddish. 
<laughs> you know, currently we have we have to talk about this one. We do have to talk about this one, but specifically because I've just gone out and done my video. Okay. Have you done yours? Because I think, it's, I, I mean, it just, it, it boggles my mind, but having lived in, in the States and just seeing how they, you know, a, a lot of countries are not exposed to realities of Africa and the beauty of Africa. I mean, I, I've literally been asked if I have a pet lion at home and I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Of course I have a pet lion at home. Like, I mean, I don't go to school on an elephant. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. So the background, I promise <laughs> Tapio probably wants to give us um, his insight on that. But um, uh, Tiffany Haddish, a comedian and a socialite, uh, did come all the way from the United States, uh, perhaps for the very first time, to have an appreciation of Zimbabwean lifestyle supermarkets, as well as many other intricacies that seemed to boggle and fascinate her. She took to social media videos of her in stores and different places, quite shocked, shell-shocked, to be frank. Shelf? Shocked? <laughs> Shelf shocked, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, giving an appreciation of what um, Zimbabwe is and not what it is perceived to be outside of the country. I'm pretty sure, Letmore, um, you know, the, 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 the superstar herself, you know, who's got a huge following, um, went ahead and said um, certain things that, oh my gosh, you know, we have supermarkets in Zimbabwe. What, what's your take on, um, you know, someone <laughs> who then comes and sees the things on the ground as opposed um, to what is being written out there about Zimbabwe? Uh, well, uh, I, 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 would, I would want to think that uh, everyone that looked at it uh, looked like it's a comedy. Mm. You know, someone... Who so are you going to give a comedic license for that? Do you think it was a whole joke? It, it, it was a joke. Because okay. why, why would you be surprised of a supermarket where you have to broadcast and tell people that we do have a supermarket <laughs> in Zimbabwe? No, but and you know, you know. <laughs> honestly, honestly, Mr. Mbizo, like there are some people that will be like, you have an airport in Zimbabwe? And I'm like, well, I'm in America. What do you think? I rode myself here on a boat? Like, how do you think I got here? Like, but the, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to give a comedic what? license. Cody, what I, are you doing? I, 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 would, I, would, I would say that... Um, you know, it's uh, someone who is not, who is misplaced. We're supposed to just be taking comedy as a profession. Because <laughs> just like this guy that went to uh, America, America's Got Talent and just said that, you know, in Zimbabwe, if you have to mm. take a call, you have to run like, go right on top of the mountain say, hello, you know, like, so, something like that. You learn know. more, Janassi. <laughs> big shout out. Yes, big shout out, learn more. But honestly, but we know he's a comedian. I'm not sure. I mean, I, Tiffany's a comedian too. She is in so, her own right. But. So, so, I mean, Zimbabweans, um, you've heard it here first on the headliner. It is our duty to have a little bit of a sense of humor, according to Mr. Mbizo and Nabila. Sort of Nabila's not agreeing with that. But uh, we'll find out more about this story as well as our SADC Industrialization Week as we continue uh, the conversation here on The Headliner. Don't go anywhere. We're going for a short break. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. This is The Headliner. I'm Nabila Jogi, and we are here to dissect all things hitting our press this week. I'm not alone. We are in studio with an economic analyst, Mr. Mbizo, as well as Mr. Kurtley Grindy. Welcome back, Kurtley. Thank you. Thank you, Nabila. And yes, uh, we are so privileged to be broadcasting um, uh, to you as well as bringing you all things to do as we cap off the SADC Industrialization Week. And other economic issues um, have been on the rise with regards to discussion everywhere. And uh, to dissect as well as give a better insight, we are, of course, as Nabil has alluded to, joined by an economic analyst who's going to take us through a little bit of uh, these matters. And um, uh, the key takeaways, perhaps, Mr. Letmore, as we go forward, um, the SADC industrialization is coming to a close, but at the very same time, we are on the onlook for the summit. Um, uh, what has been um, a few of the lessons learned and how best can we implement them going forward? Well, um, you know, the, 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 the agenda here is uh, very clear when you are um, also looking forward to have uh, uh, investors in the country. You know, there are key things that uh, comes with the business, which is honesty, 
uh, and uh, doesn't have to come with uh, discrepancies whereby it has to scare of uh, the, the investors and stuff. So it goes back to the same basics of uh, corruption where everyone has to uh, lead zero tolerance uh, to, to corruption. So it's, uh, it is the major key thing that uh, has to give our uh, investors confidence mm -hmm. yeah, to actually look into our economy. Absolutely. And uh, based on what has been transpiring, um, uh, perhaps a few of the um, uh, issues uh, that have been brought to the table are what is being done um, in Zimbabwe. I know you are within the space and circuit that allows uh, many investors to come as well as uh, many businesses to grow through external help. How best have we instilled that confidence as Zimbabwe? within your sector, as well as many other sectors um, that are proving to be working with the international scale? Yeah, well, uh, the, the, the confidence, um, or should I say, per se, um, what are the, it's like, for example, if you are going to a bank, for example, and you're looking for a loan, they, they need to understand your business and see what's the background of your business. Uh, do we give the confidence of our people to put the money into your business and stuff. So I, I, it's basically the same thing that we've been trying to do as Zimbabweans to show confidence uh, for people uh, mm -hmm. by doing the right thing. And the right thing is the business scale where they're looking at the background of our business. Mm. You see, I, it should give them confidence as to what we are doing behind the scenes. So the, the main agenda is um, the structure's already there, but are we applying the right way? You know, so if you look at uh, us as a business as a whole, we, in SADAC, we are approaching the business the same way, you understand? Mm. So the only thing that is there now is for our government to just loosen up some certain uh, measures which they put across like our taxes and stuff. Mm. These are the things that are basically luring these people to come in. And these are the best, I mean, the basis of the questions that they've been giving as well to see the percentages whereby we are moving from 49% to 51% shareholding mm. capacity. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think we as a nation still need to do? I mean, we've seen that this uh, industrialization week was definitely effective, but what steps, I mean, we're talking about things that we are lacking that we've learned through this week. What other steps do we need to take to become who we need to be? Yeah, um, so the, 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 the steps that we, 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 we need to take uh, ourselves here is uh, we need to keep on pressing the button whereby our currency has to be stable, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is proven to be stable. Because if we have seen when we introduced the ZIG, uh, it is shown to be more stable than before, whereby our uh, currency is not losing value like uh, before, you understand? So it's, it, it is one of the best fundamental thing that has really improved uh, on us because anything else that we have been doing, we have been doing right, you know, except our currency that has been scaring people away. But as of now, you can see everything is stable. Absolutely. And then, uh, you know, we've seen so many changes happening within the country. We've seen road rehabilitation. We've seen within the tourism industry, we've seen trainings happening. We've seen upgrading of facilities. Um, but I wanted to zone in on a specific industry, and that is the leather industry. Because the leather industry, I felt, was a dying art. Because, you know, the art of shoe making, the art of bulk making, the leather industry is popping up. And we did see that pop up during Industrialization Week. Care to give us a comment on what you think about the the industries that are being mainly dominated by this? I think uh, let's take a look at uh, that. Uh, you know, having an appreciation, uh, to be fair and honest, um, you know, the leather industry has uh, spiraled into a space, and I'm pretty sure uh, Mr. Letmore can attest uh, to that, allowing a lot of the, um, you know, I know we do know a lot of businesses that have given an appreciation of um, this particular uh, field where, you know, livestock has been something that is present, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, having that space and time, um, allowing also 
so as to integrate um, the theme itself, which is uh, promoting innovation to unlock opportunities for sustainable economic growth and development uh, towards an industrialized SADC. Um, that is also just giving a greater picture of uh, perhaps the, 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 the circuit in which uh, that industry is um, in particular uh, cognizance too. But I do know and I have an appreciation, Abila, that um, our guest today uh, also very much uh, gives a space and time uh, where he allows um, the education sector once again um, uh, to have um, a broader picture with regards to even uh, the growth of the economy. Would you briefly share on that, Mr. Mbizo, uh, with regards to what has been happening? We do know that there is the Presidential Education 5.0 scheme. Yeah, yeah. So if you look into our education, um, His Excellency has been so supportive into our ed education systems. Uh, but now it's, it's left on us, um, the, uh, the people and uh, the basically would uh, maybe I would want to talk about publishers uh, as to how they should maybe be taking opportunity of what has been happening uh, in our education system. As you have noticed now, we we, we actually having a new uh, new curriculum that is coming in 2025. Oh the yes. one that which we are using, the competent based, is actually expiring uh, this December. 2024. So in 2025, we're going to uh, be moving into new heritage-based uh, curriculum, mm. uh, whereby um, the publishers also need to take opportunity. But it's going to be a very big, vast, uh, I mean, opportunity even, even to the publishers as well. And uh, we have noted that uh, our education systems has been always been supported, and there's uh, no much conditions to it, whereby. Uh, publishers have been also uh, taking opportunities of doing books in India, oh, yes. China and stuff. And I would want to urge all publishers to take this opportunity of the new heritage uh, based curriculum that is also coming in 2025 uh, by trying to produce as much as they can because the market volume is actually talking of over a billion dollars uh, to try and competent the 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 materials that is going to be needed in 2025. So you see, if ever this is not taken uh, into consideration in right time, we're going to have a, a, a vacuum in 2025 whereby there won't be enough books mm. to be used because the one that is uh, we have been using the curriculum based is now becoming redundant. Mm. You see, indeed, indeed, they do say knowledge is power, and it's the key to a brighter future. So taking a look at that and also appreciating everything to do uh, with the work that is happening in the education uh, sector. Um, you know, we are talking about uh, the theme itself, which is um, economic growth. And um, we're not just looking at Zimbabwe growing um, with regards to just uh, the education sector as a silo. But we also want to perhaps compare and contrast how we are as players within the entire SADC region. How are we faring on the educational front? And how are we contributing? Uh, we, 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 we're contributing so much as a, as a country. You know, um, um, I think you've heard about our nurses that have been educated from this country. And uh, they've been, we, 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 way, way by the vice president, he had said, he issued a statement that, uh, you know, we producing nurses and uh, we, we, we we were left with none here, yeah. and mm -hmm. we, we everyone uh, they are looking at our nurses and you know so we we are contributing a lot into other economies. You see, so if you go to South Africa, you look at our teachers and our nurses uh, at an university, you see thirty thirty to forty percent comes from Zimbabwe. Mm. You see, so in other words, we actually contributing a lot into our neighboring countries. Okay, Into that's good. And yeah, the SADC region at large. Uh, Nabila, obviously, great to see that um, that is a key. I mean, amongst the, the issue to do with uh, such industries as leather, we're also seeing um, the education industry. Absolutely. And, you know, and I brought up these, uh, you know, specifically the leather industry and then education, as you brought up. But what I'm trying to, what's kind of boggling my mind at this point is, do you think that we have what it takes to continue with this momentum because you know the lead up to industrialization week the lead up to the static summit has been 
uh, just huge. But do we have the momentum to continue? We're talking about changing the curriculum, obviously, in 2025, printing of books. We have not very many months until 2025. If we haven't started, are we ready? What do we need to do? I, I, would, I would say, uh, due to the information that we have from the Minister of Education, they are actually saying that um, they're working on the... Um, the, 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 the new curriculum in as much as the syllabus. So it has to intertwine, mm -hmm. you know. So it's the duty of the publishers because it's not the government that is taking that space, you know. The publishers has it on hand where so they need to be well So government is just given invested. a platform They just give it a platform. Okay. Yes. Right. So, so, so now the, the, the publishers now has to be well equipped. But all I can say is because it's capital it tends. The banks has to uh, have the leverage to try and support this industry mm -hmm. because, uh, like I said, you know, it's it's, it's a billion dollar. Mm. Uh, uh, like for example, we have about six thousand um, eight hundred schools mm. uh, in, in in Zimbabwe, right? That that's the uh, the database of twenty twenty four mm -hmm. uh, January, right? But we also do have shortages, uh, shortage of two thousand eight hundred schools in the country oh. due to the number of sensors it's been growing mm. that's good yeah. and uh, growth is important growth is integral and obviously as we can see there is a lot happening um, on the front to do with all these things and you did hear it from mr letmore himself uh, please if you are a publisher come on board support the industrialization we carry on the conversation a little bit further we'll take a short break we'll be right back Many thanks for staying with us here on The Headliner. And of course, we continue the conversation. As promised, everything to do with the SADC Industrialization Week and economic issues is unwrapped in this episode. Nabila, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I am genuinely very excited to have these conversations. I'm very excited to have um, Mr. Mbizo in studio with us. Thank you so much for joining us, an economic analyst. And he's really helping us to unravel, unpack, and just really delve into these issues and to see how best we can go forward with them. And I have a quick question. I just, I'm just i going to jump straight in because I feel like we need to continue this conversation. Uh -huh. I'm very metrics performance based evaluation based I'm um, I come from an HR background so all, all of these metrics need to be measured what do we have in place to measure the success of the industrialization week about all the efforts that were put in do we have any measures in place or metrics or analysis or analytic tools in place to measure it yeah uh, I, I, I would I would say that it would be a bit too early to try and measure it because it's just been happening, it's a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say that give it, give or take, let's give it a little while, whereby we, even when we vote a president in the, I mean, in the office, we give him 100 days to see the change and stuff. We do, so, but so, when a president so. is campaigning, they tell us their plan in advance. So before we embark on something, surely we should know what we're aiming to achieve out of it before mm -hmm. we get there. So are we saying that we, we went into it and just said, industrialization here we come and we don't like the the performance metrics of it like are we not looking at any form of numbers numeracy here because we needed to be looking at things like participants i know that we had over 3500 participants at the industrialization week how does that fare according to previous industrialization weeks you know those are the kind of metrics i'm looking at yeah so like just just, just like i said you know uh, everything uh, after it's been said and done, you know, people are still trying to digest, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, definitely I can tell you, right, the, the, the outcome that we're having from this industrialization, it's, it's going to be, uh, uh, I mean, the results are just going to be overwhelming, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to just give the right numbers mm -hmm. as of now. 
because we're still digesting and trying to figure out what is going to take sense. us to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do need to then, okay, so I'll, I'll lighten up on the questioning. I feel like I'm putting you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will lighten up on the questioning. Um, you spoke about some friends that you have in other countries within SADC. Um, you know, let's talk a bit about collaboration opportunities and knowledge sharing. Do you think that that actually came out of Industrialization Week? Yes, yes, it did, definitely. So definitely. let's let's talk a bit more about that. Do we have understandings of what we're wanting to do going forward in terms of investment? Where are we leading towards? Are we leading towards joint ventures, um, public-private partnerships? What are we leading towards? Well, uh, it's, 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 it's mixed. We're going to have joint ventures, uh, public partnerships it's also going to take place in uh, you know but a lot of it is uh, mostly joint ventures because you know joint ventures are, are, are good in the sense that you know the people that are coming outside the country they are taking advantage of people that are local you understand so working with locals it really gives you a better direction because you have uh, people that has got ownership you know of the uh, economy in as much as you come and join it you also claim the ownership to be part of it mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes and uh, let's talk about perhaps a common language uh, mr letmore where we have an appreciation of um, businesses coming at a front of being in the public uh, private sector uh, but we also do have uh, the role that government plays. How best um, can we say, because obviously we're talking about collaborations mainly of businesses uh, within the private sector that are operating um, not as a silo but in collaboration, as you've rightly said. How best um, can governments also create a system where they are speaking one language within the SADC region as there is already you know, a platform such as this that is happening? We do have the incoming uh, chairperson who's going to be instated. Um, what, 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 what would you like to think that he's going to implement and put at the front and helm of governments to then listen to collectively as a SADC region? Well, um, you know, uh, as the president becoming, I mean, he, since he's becoming the, the chairperson uh, in, in the SADC region, he needs to take advantage of uh, the loopholes that we've been facing as a country. You know, uh, for example, you know, if you look at us in South Africa, uh, South Africa has just been become the port of, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the port that has been uh, supplying the whole uh, Sada country, yes. you know, so so in in the in this spot whereby he is the centerpiece right now, he needs to take advantage of things that needs to be produced from our country, like you've been uh, mentioning of uh, leather industry that is also upcoming and it's it's improving. Oh so yeah. we need to make sure that our local goods needs to be exported mm. outside. SADAC, mm. as well as making sure that all product, uh, producers that are being produced in SADAC, yeah. they need to be, uh, what do you call it, uh, they need to be... Standardized. Uh, no, no, standardized, but they, they also need to uh, to be fat exempted. Okay. You understand? Whereby if you are buying anything from uh, from Zimbabwe and it's being taken to uh, mm. to South Africa, so li they need just need to make sure exactly the okay. taxes mustn't be too high. It, it, the the law is there in SADAC already. Mm. Whereby if you import anything from Asia, you pay so much tax. But if you importing anything from SADAC, mm. you don't pay so much. Mm. But they need to lessen it a bit. Mm. Yeah. So government does have a role to play and we are agreeing that it will be within our benefit um, uh, and uh, perhaps a privilege to be having uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Comrade Emerson Nambuzom Nangagwa as the incoming chair. We are looking at that, Nabila, and I know the 17th going into this month. We've just started the month of August. Yes, we are. And uh, we are very much looking forward um, uh, to this. Any last words, uh, Nabila, as we close off the segment? And obviously, we give a very big gratitude to you, Mr. Letmore, for coming through today. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, we've learned a lot from you. Mm. And parting words, my absolutely amazing thoughts here were, Zimbabwe, we did it. 
We, we did it. We, we got through industrialize, uh, Industrialization Week and we are so ready to tackle the summit coming up towards the mid, middle of the month, 17th of August. I'm so excited to see what's going to come out of this. We've seen the changes. Um, we, uh, we, we saw um, on one of our news uh, bulletins a few days ago, if not yesterday, I believe, um, we saw an amazing interview happening and we were basically going through and understanding how people that come into the country they don't live here see the differences in a matter of months so i can just imagine what the end of 2024 going into 2025 will be absolutely okay, yeah. beautiful and uh, mr letmore any last words as we close off yeah i i i, I, I would like just to replicate what you just said it's yeah. gonna be amazing from 2024 to 2025 oh. i think zimbabwe will just be amazing oh yes yeah oh, thank you thank you so much and yes that brings a wrap uh, to this week's dose of the headliner where we have been tackling all things to do with the sadic industrialization week economic issues on the table very much uh, well brought into insight by our special guest, uh, Mr. Let Mortapia Ambizo. A very big thanks to you all for tuning in to this very, very special segment that comes to you same time, same place here on uh, ZBC uh, TV and uh, ZBC News uh, 24. Don't forget to subscribe and follow our pages. That is uh, ZBC News Online. My name is Kurt Lee Gwindi. Until next time, it's a pleasant viewing and God bless Zimbabwe. Where?